In college, I was studying film and I majored in anthropology. And so I naturally assumed I'd become an ethnographic filmmaker going around the world documenting indigenous cultures. It didn't quite end up that way. I ended up as a newspaper photographer, photographing rock and roll and riots and demonstrations in the 70s. Well, I actually stumbled into dance photography when my editors assigned me to cover some dance concerts. And I found that I was drawn to the fact that just a beautiful photograph didn't have to tell a story. I was doing many different kinds of photography as one cobbles together a career, but I found that the dance photography took off more quickly and captured my imagination. I'm known for taking these impossible configurations of dancers in the air, high-risk movements that are non-repeatable, and they happen just for the camera. They can't be seen on a stage because they can never be part of a continuum of movement. There's no takeoff, there's no landing. They're just isolated split seconds. And I almost never take what is called the peak of the action where the dancer's perfectly up in the air in the perfect split. I usually take the photo when the dancer is coming down slightly because then they're relaxed. They're no longer a stiff form. Their gestures soften and they look like they're floating. And there's more of an emotional narrative content to it as opposed to just a perfect position. The first time I ever saw a photographic print come to life in my dark room back when I was a newspaper photographer. It was just thrilling to see the white paper just suddenly become the photograph that I took when I was out on assignment. It was through making the prints in the darkroom that I realized the potential and how important the print was. That was gonna tell the story. Since about the year 2000, I've been printing almost exclusively with inkjet. And it's really been enormously satisfying in that I can actually get different tones and surfaces and feels in the different papers. I love actually holding the print of the dancer jumping in the flower. The texture of the flower and the texture of the paper unites everything that I wanted to capture in the medium in which I'm presenting it. I think prints are more important than ever. We're inundated with images and they're small thumbnails and we're online and we can hardly even keep up with the number of images that we see as we scroll around. And maybe we spend a couple of seconds barely getting the gist of a picture that's about one inch, two inches big. But if you look at a photographic print that you're holding in your hands or it's on a wall in your studio or a museum, it has all your attention. It's there in all its glory, with all the subtle tones that you put into it, with all the textures you wanted to capture. I want people to actually take the time in front of the images I spend so much time on and really get involved in the aesthetics of it or what it means and, and experience it. I mean, basically, we experience photographs. The photograph is our only way of keeping so much that has happened. And if that doesn't last, then we really don't have anything. With Epson's new ink technology, with its increased permanence, I have confidence that my prints will endure. That's so important to me because the prints are my legacy.